I never want to see again, ever, what I trawled through 30 years ago. I never want to see human beings reduced to a puddle of diuretic shit. I never want to see two-year-olds voiding their stomachs in their father's hands. And I don't care what it takes to avoid that. Three decades ago, musician Bob Geldof raised millions in aid by staging concerts for Ethiopians who were dying in a famine. Now he is chairman of Eight Miles, a private equity firm investing in Ethiopian companies. Eight Miles raised a $200 million fund in 2012. One of Geldof's investments is the Awash Winery. Have you invested in Eight Miles? Yeah, of course. You know, I have to. It's skin in the game stuff, isn't it? How much have you invested in uh, Personally, money-wise, um, throughout the course of the first fund, it'll be in the region of a few hundred thousand. So if, you, if 8 Miles makes a profit from these investments, you're making a profit? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is, this is capitalism, red in tooth and claw. The idea of Bob Geldof is he's the pop star that raised charitable funds for starving people in Ethiopia. And now he's investing in companies in Ethiopia and stands to make a profit. Hmm. Some people struggle with that. Well, what I do with the profit is my business. Sure. But what, they, what the investors do with their profit is entirely their business. And what they will do is reinvest in other companies. <laughs> By red and tooth and claw, I don't mean you scratch my back and I'll claw yours. No, it's about what's it, if what's it, you know, trade, which is capitalism, uh, makes countries viable. And that's all that they require, the stability of a viable economy. A number of high-profile American private equity firms, including KKR, are investing in Ethiopia. They are part of a historic shift as investment overtakes aid in Africa. For Geldof, investing comes with responsibilities. You know, the PE guys, I mean, of course, you know, they want returns, but it doesn't mean that they have to be rapacious. And, you know, frankly, most aren't. Rapacity isn't very good for returns. From 8 Miles' perspective, we come with all the rigour of European labour law and local labour labor law. And I think that KKR or any of these guys going in, if they don't have that, they absolutely must have it. Do you have to be any more respectful in Africa than you would be investing in an American company? No. You treat people with dignity. You know, Africans aren't infants. They're not a special case. They're sentient, intelligent, capable human beings. <laughs> Eight Miles is investing in Africa because what's it, personally speaking, and this is Bob and not the company speaking, because I want to grow the economy, but I want to give an example through us. And it's not just there. Obviously, we're in Egypt, which is a military dictatorship. We're in Uganda, which has a lot to be desired politically. We're in Ghana, which is a very vibrant free press and free uh, de democracy within reason, you know. But for me, the key issue is to give people jobs, skills transfers, help to build a local economy and therefore a national economy. That's what I'm doing. And to show the model that this continent is vibrant, intellectual, capable and open for business. That's Bob's purpose in this. See this little girl? She had 10 minutes to live 20 years ago. And because we did a concert in this city and in Philadelphia, and all of you came and some of you weren't born because we did that, last week she did her agricultural exams in the school she goes to in the northern Ethiopian highlands. She's here tonight, this little girl. You know, that, that terrible cliche, you can give a man a fish or you can teach him to fish for life, it's that thing. So that's essentially the journey, the personal journey.
And I think once you are allowed to imagine yourself into existence, then you demand your individual freedom.